time to rock and roll! Hello my friends. My name is Bot Mathematician and this is Hello Mansur. Also, Chief Investigative Reporter Dora joined us this evening. Gadgets and Gazette always gets the scoop. Over the past six months, Hearthstone management has made a series of disruptive decisions that have left players feeling like the game is dying. The streamlining of processes, the lack of dialogue, the disappearance of integral elements of the game, and more aggressive sales methods may all be a result of the game's declining profits. Indirect data suggests that the game's audience is growing, and is largely satisfied with the game, but is definitely less likely to make purchases. In addition, the game has lost at least 60% of its revenue over the last few years for reasons beyond the control of the development team. Under the circumstances, we assume that Blizzard's first priority is to increase Hearthstone's financial efficiency, which is a rational decision, but players have completely opposite expectations. They want active development and they expect the game to become friendlier. The tragedy is that it's almost impossible to satisfy both sides. Moreover, Hearthstone's management has chosen the worst possible strategy to achieve its own goals, and this has led to the first serious consequences we discussed in the previous video. The end is coming! We pay special attention to Hearthstone's in-game economy and explore the effectiveness of different monetization methods through surveys of our audience. We try to find compromises that meet the expectations of both developers and players. Sometimes we are able to predict things that later appear in the game. This has been the case with battle pass concepts, realistic animated diamond cards, and alternative coins. But sometimes good ideas on paper can't be realized because there are a lot of hidden rigid frameworks that developers are forced to work within. In this video, we want to share our ideas about the hidden limitations that keep Hearthstone from being a perfect game. Most importantly, we want to discuss our alternative strategy for Hearthstone that could potentially make the game much better. We believe this video can be the start of a larger dialogue between players and developers, but to make our voice heard, we really need your help. YouTube will not be showing this video to a wide audience, so we are asking you to get active and help us spread our thoughts to gather as many opinions as possible. We want to talk about topics that are not usually discussed, but this is very important in the current circumstances. We invite all members of the community to have a wide discussion about the current state of the game and ways to improve it. This is a very important moment for the future of the game. We hope that a great dialogue will help the Hearthstone team find new, out-of-the-box ideas to implement. If you are a streamer, even with a small audience, feel free to react to this video or share your thoughts on the current development strategy and your own ideas. Criticize, argue, suggest. Maybe together we can influence the current development strategy of the game. So let's start with the limitations that developers have to deal with. The first major limitation of Hearthstone is monetization, which is based on the balance of free resources. Any method of monetization in games as services forces players and developers to make major compromises. Hearthstone offers players to buy variety, but not advantage. Crafting the most effective decks for one or more classes is relatively easy, even for a beginner, but playing all classes and all available archetypes is extremely difficult. Want more variety? Buy resources to expand your options. For this reason, packs, pre-orders, and bundles are the main source of revenue, and the suggestion that cosmetics can become a viable alternative is a common myth. A clear balance of readily available free resources leaves room for a purchase. But it's a very fragile construct. If players are allowed to get more resources, Buying packs with real money becomes meaningless, and the game risks losing its main source of profit. We believe that Hearthstone is the most expensive game in the genre to support and develop, so even with a huge player base, without a stable profit, the game is doomed to death or a significant decline in quality. Gwent and Legends of Runeterra challenged Hearthstone as cheaper games, leading to their commercial failure. The second limitation is high pricing which is often absurd. It's true, but don't forget that in free-to-play games, when you make a purchase, you pay the development cost for several free-to-play players as well. However, the community believes that the prices should be significantly lowered and that this will certainly increase the company's profits. This is another misconception. Our numerous surveys show that a potential reduction in the cost of items does not result in a proportional increase in the number of people willing to buy them. In addition, Blizzard uses the most optimal pricing to maximize its own revenue. The third restriction is less obvious. 
Developers use manipulative methods to force players to focus on standard in order to maintain profits, since the format is the main source of revenue. Here are just a few examples. The new twist format tends to disappear before a new expansion is released, so as not to distract players. Playing Battlegrounds rewards you with gold that can only be spent in traditional Hearthstone modes. In this way, the developers want you to have the resources to return to standard. The Battlegrounds track is very short, this is done intentionally so that players do not linger in the mode. Incidentally, we have every reason to believe that Battlegrounds, despite its immense popularity, is not generating impressive revenue. This is a clear example of the fact that cosmetics in card games are an extremely ineffective way of monetization. But the most important limitation of the developers is the crafting system. Despite the fact that Hearthstone is generally considered to be a very expensive game, Dust allows you to get the card you need in a very simple way. By today's standards of games as services, this gives players too much freedom to extract additional benefits not provided by the balance of resources. Don't get me wrong, as a player I love the lack of barriers, but this approach has a very negative impact on the game's economy. Even the seemingly harmless act of keeping all extra copy cards in the collection while waiting for a refund after a nerf is detrimental to the game. The possibility of destroying all sets after rotation frees up a ton of resources, and is a complete disaster. This system under certain circumstances, is too loyal and leads to the accumulation of a huge amount of resources, which is one of the reasons why the game's profits are decreasing. I know you still believe in the myth that the cost of crafting cards is too high and needs to be lowered. This has been the most popular request from players to developers for the last 10 years. No one is stopping you from continuing to demand it, but let's take a look at the competitors in the genre. Ben Brode, one of the fathers of Hearthstone, created his own card game, Marvel Snap, which still has the most impressive revenue in the mobile market. An important feature of the game is the lack of a crafting system and lack of compensation after nerfs. As one of the people who helped bring the crafting system to Hearthstone, he knew that the system could harm income in the long run. Here's another example. In Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duels, in order to craft a legendary card analog, you must use a dust analog, which can only be obtained from legendary cards. Thus, the game forces you to get rid of three ultra-rare cards to get just the one you need. Under these conditions, the collecting process becomes significantly more difficult, and excess resources become completely useless. Due to the flexibility of the crafting system, Hearthstone developers cannot give players more free packs, as this would upset the delicate balance of resources. Moreover, the crafting system does not allow to reduce the cost of old packs that contain useless cards, as cheap packs will become a source of dust for crafting at a reduced cost. All this leads us naturally to the formulation of the basic problem. Under the current circumstances, the main condition for keeping the game alive is to increase profits. With such serious limitations, it is almost impossible to make Hearthstone more loyal and increase the game's revenue at the same time. This is probably why Hearthstone managers rely on cosmetics. Developers cannot lower the cost of items. They can't create new ways of monetization that threaten the effectiveness of the main revenue sources. They cannot increase rewards because they must respect the fragile balance of free resources. Any innovations should not abuse the crafting system and should focus primarily on traditional ways of playing, especially the standard format, but at the same time have room for monetization. This seems like a complete impasse. But we think we have found a way out of this situation, by implementing just two very simple innovations. The first thing is ghostly cards. This is a new type of card that has duplicate protection and has the same game features as regular cards. They can be in golden design but in addition have color and colorless versions. If you want, you can colorize the card for a cost that is equivalent to dusting the regular version of a card of similar rarity, then you will have the opportunity to upgrade to the golden version, but even in this case, the card can never be turned into useful resources, even after the nerfs. In fact, ghostly cards are analogous to uncraftable cards, which have long existed in the game and are distributed to players as special rewards. But ghostly cards are much more flexible and can be used in many scenarios. For example, developers may have the ability to present new players the full ghostly set of the oldest expansion in Standard. Currently this is Festival of Legends. This will greatly increase the opportunities for creative experimentation, but will not break the economy of the game. Players will be able to restore color to their favorite cards if they wish. The lack of color will not affect the gameplay, but leaves room for investing a limited amount of resources. 
We've been tossing this idea around for over a year, but imagine our surprise, when we found out that Blizzard is giving Chinese players all the cards from the 2023 sets, including the golden versions, as a reward for getting back into the game. That's over 2000 cards. Although we don't know the details, we're sure that the developers will somehow limit the ability to turn these cards into dust to prevent the balance of free resources from being destroyed. Thus, we assume that players will receive analogs of ghostly cards. Finally we see an example of a proper game development strategy. In this case, the place for monetization will be two new sets. We will have a real opportunity to test the effectiveness of this approach in practice. We believe this method can lead to record profits. With impressive results, this approach can be integrated into the rest of the world. There can be many scenarios for using ghostly cards. Legendary cards can be sold at a reduced cost, including in bundles, primarily for the wild format at first. The absence of dust in packs will reduce the cost of these offers several times and will help the veteran fill the gaps in the collection. Ghostly packs contain both colored and colorless versions of cards, the probability of getting them depends on their rarity. For example, common cards are always colored, while legendary cards only 30% of the time. This feature of the packs allows you to reduce the cost of upgrading your collection to a colored version. In addition, as an experiment, developers can start selling full ghostly sets of old expansions in colorless form but at a fixed cost. If you need gaming tools for competitive play, this is the easiest way to get them. Hearthstone currently contains 845 legendary cards, some of which the developers can give away to players as gifts affecting the resource balance. It is possible to create conditions under which players, in addition to guaranteed rewards for level achievements on the rewards track, with a certain chance, can get a ghostly card from the wild. The probability of getting an additional reward could be based on the way catch-up packs work. The fewer cards you have in your collection, the more likely you are to get an extra reward. Thus, the reward will become regular mainly for players who have come to the game relatively recently and will lower the barrier of entry into the wild format. In turn, veterans with extensive collections may have the opportunity to receive golden versions of cards or exclusive signature cards from a special pool. But ghostly cards need to work in tandem with yet another component. Hearthstone is a collectible card game in which collecting is no longer a fun part of the gameplay. Players have no motivation to save cards and build extensive collections, even though increasing the number of cards is the main way to progress in the game. According to our survey, only 15% of players have completed their Wizbang collection. Another 11% are very close to doing so. In our opinion, the developers were thinking in the right direction when they offered a diamond card as a reward for getting almost all legendary cards in the set. Some time ago we asked our subscribers what rewards you think are worthy for collecting the entire card collection. 15% of players want a whole new kind of cosmetics, more than 30% want a rational benefit in the form of XP boost. While half of the players chose legendary cards with unique designs. So diamond cards could have been a good incentive, but since the beginning of this year the developers removed this reward and now sell it in the store for money. But what if the management tried to cater to the desire of all players and thus create the perfect incentive for everyone? Here's what the total reward for obtaining a complete collection of all perils in Paradise cards might look like. Such an achievement definitely deserves an exclusive kind of cosmetics. We propose creating spectators. These are original Hearthstone heroes that watch your game in the tavern and with a certain probability comment on key moments of the match with prepared visual and audio reactions. I've ensured you go first this game. These reactions can include threats to your opponent, words of encouragement, criticism of your decisions, or even a display of facepalm emotion. Each spectator has unique triggers. The more spectators you have, the more reactions become available throughout the match. This type of cosmetics cannot be obtained through other alternative means. In addition, rewards may contain costumes, alternate looks, for your spectators, including for spectators from other collectible reward pools. Here are a few more rewards. You can get all the free portraits that were given to players during the expansion phase and their enhanced versions of the second tier, but without the new soundtracks. Blizzard tried once to sell portraits with basic replicas for money and it was a very bad decision but as a special reward it's a rational approach. A particular note is the permanent XP battle boost. This is a small permanent bonus that increases your reward for time spent in PvP matches and is stacked with other XP boosts. The idea is simple. Finish a collection and get a little more gold for each match, making it a little easier to collect subsequent collections. 
With the removal of the AFK XP grind option, this idea has no reason not to be implemented anymore. I think the diamond card should be brought back into the pool, in addition to that, add a few uncraftable signature legendary cards plus 5 golden ghostly legendary cards, which will make collecting the golden collection a little more attractive. An important feature of this reward pool should be the ability for the player to receive all the free cosmetic rewards that were presented during the expansion phase, including on the free reward track. Collect the full collection and get everything you missed. There also needs to be a separate pool of exclusive rewards for owners of the gold collection, which will include improved free skins of the third tier, 10 exclusive signature legendary cards that will allow you to collect alternative skins for all legendaries from the set, and also additional skins for spectators. But there are nuances. The collection is considered complete if you have collected two copies of all collectible cards, and if you have colorless ghostly cards, you will have to turn them into colored versions first. Also, to get the reward, you will have to agree to a condition that all your cards will be permanently turned into colored ghostly versions. This rule does not apply to extra copies, so visually your cards won't change, but most of them can't be turned into useful resources in the future. I know this won't please most players, but this is the only way to try to avoid complete destruction of collections after rotations. Also this approach reduces the possibilities of resource abuse in the game. In our opinion, this is a forced compromise. So, the main goal of our concept is to upgrade the collection system. Ghostly cards reduce the cost of collections, make it easier to access a wide range of tools for competitive play, and create new scenarios for additional rewards. For free-to-play players, newcomers and returning players, the game becomes much more friendly, increasing their options. But at the same time, this does not carry any tangible risks for the game's economy, as it leaves room for resource investment. In turn, the unique rewards for keeping a collection make collecting more fun and can potentially offset the negative aspects of the crafting system. Players will be able to fill the gaps in their collections at a significantly reduced price to unlock rewards, and Blizzard will have the opportunity to monetize this. The value of any in-game purchase will be significantly increased as it approaches a very generous reward. But it's worth talking separately about the game aspect. Collecting itself makes little sense if the cards are useless to use. This is especially true for older sets. For this reason, we see the need to create a nostalgia format that sends us back to the metagame of the very early years of Hearthstone. It would also be interesting to gradually expand old sets with cards for new classes. How would Death Knight have felt during the Goblins vs Gnomes era? We could end up with access to a completely different gaming experience. I'm really looking forward to seeing that. But there's one very big problem. With developers forcibly focusing players' attention on the standard format, it may not be possible to fully realize this approach. Having a variety of ways to play has always been a huge advantage of Hearthstone. If you don't like the situation in standard, if you have an extensive collection, you can go wild or classic or duels. These options allow for increased engagement and variety. The new management strategy is to focus on standard by eliminating competing modes. I can assume that the presence of alternative, even not the most popular ways of playing could have a negative impact on the profit from the sale of new expansions. This is probably one of the reasons why the developers removed the classic format without even trying to develop it, cutting out the duels mode and no plans to improve the wild format this year. In a situation where nothing should take players' attention away from standard for too long, the implementation of access to the nostalgia format may be limited within the monthly tavern brawl or one of several seasonal twist formats. Yes. This sounds like another forced compromise, but if our perceptions are correct, Blizzard won't be able to change their approach until the game's financial viability is addressed. Dear viewers, it's time for you to pass judgment on our concept. Are you ready to collect and keep a complete collection of cards including those from old expansions to get unique bonuses, of course provided that Blizzard will introduce an analog of ghostly cards that will make collecting cheaper. As always we have created a poll on our community tab. Please be active, criticize, suggest, share this concept on social media. We are interested in getting as much feedback as possible to test the effectiveness of this idea. Traditionally, we want to express our boundless gratitude to our sponsors. Dear friends, your help is invaluable. We will be grateful for any support. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you for spending this time with us. We really hope that we will have the opportunity to get in touch in the next video. Take care of yourself and never give up.
Job's done. <laughs>